If there was ever a love-hate relationship in the world of enterprise software development with Java, it has to be with the Spring XML configuration file. It's hate because people hate editing Spring's XML configuration file, especially when you would have hundreds of beans in there with all sorts of different auto wiring happening. The problem with XML files is they're not compile time checks. So if you mess something up, you don't know until you run your application. Now, at the same time, it's a love relationship because well, it gets all of the configuration out of your Java code. I've got some code here that I've been working on a few tutorials in Spring, and you can see I've got a game class and I've got a score class, and both of them have the at component annotation on them. In fact, there's even an auto-wired annotation in there in the game class where we auto-wire in an instance of the score. Now, you're probably thinking, what's wrong with that? Well, those are supposed to be POJOs. Those are supposed to be plain, ordinary Java objects. And they're not ordinary Java objects if they've got a link to the Spring Framework on them. And that's what those annotations are. If I try to give those POJOs, those common files to my data tier, to my web tier, to my service tier, all of those tiers are going to tear up because they need to have the Spring libraries with them in order for those annotations to compile. And that's a lot to ask for your data layer or your web layer, right? You should be able to pass your Java beans around without having to expect other layers in your application to import in and uh, bring in all of the Spring libraries. So this is the beautiful thing about XML configuration. Rather than using things like the component and auto-wired annotations in order to tell our Spring IOC container how to manage these beans, we can push this all off into an XML file and keep our Java beans pure, just like the game and score class are now with those auto wired and, and component annotations gone. Now, of course, the problem is here, this code won't work. So what I've got to do is I've got to go and create a brand new beans.xml file over here in the resources folder of my spring project. Now, by the way, this is not a spring boot project. This is actually just a spring framework project. If you're looking on configuring XML files with spring boot, I've got a, a separate tutorial on that, but it's just a, a quick little change to your spring project. Now, here's the thing with, you know, with XML people, you know, you got to just do all of this configuration, all of this XML, all of this namespace garbage. Half the time it can't resolve it or there's something wrong there. So you get errors. I mean, you can see, can you see all the red X's there? If you can see all of the red X's, you need to get your eyes checked because those are not red X's. Those are white X's on a red circle. But if you see those white X's, don't worry about them too much. One problem that I'm getting right here is the fact that every beans that xml file has to configure at least one bean in it so that's the first thing i do i gotta put a configuration in here you can see i've got a pretty lazy score class i know i don't have any setters or getters in there don't report me to the authorities i'm trying to keep this example as simple as possible but I need to tell Spring about that score class. And it's pretty easy to do. All I got to do is add a beans entry into this file here. Let's just take a look at this. I'm going to say I've got a, a bean here, a Spring bean that I want the Spring IOC container to manage. The ID is going to be score. Um, the class is going to be com.mcnz.spring.score, and I do believe that is the, the right package and class name for the score class. Now, this is the way to tell the Spring IOC container that I want you to manage instances of this score class. Now, things are going to get a little bit more complicated with the game because that game needs an instance of the score. Previously, that was auto-wired in. The score was auto-wired into the constructor of the game using the auto-wired annotation. So how do we get around that? Well, it's not too difficult. There are configurations here that we can use. Boy, this takes me back to 2005 when I was a young and handsome man doing spring configuration. Um, and here you go. I say I've got a game bean, a bean, na uh, bean named game. It's an instance of the spring game class. And 
when the constructor runs, we need to wire in an instance of the score. Now notice that the reference is not in the class, it's on the ID here. And that's pretty cool because you can actually configure beans. Maybe you can set properties or initialize different beans differently, give them different configurations. Um, and that way you can have other beans that might use a, an instance of that class, but have it configured slightly differently. Um, so it was a pretty powerful thing. But yeah, you can see that that ID there, the reference score, maps back to the ID of the previous bean. So that's your XML configuration. Now, we're not done. Previously, when we told the Spring Framework about these beans, um, well, I used this Spring Example class that had the component scan on it, which allowed me to look for the at component annotations. That's the way that I was, that's the, the code that we just fixed, that we just uh, edited. Uh, prior to that, we actually just passed the names of the classes that we wanted Spring to manage right into the constructor. That's another way to do it. <laughs> that doesn't scale well when you've got 300 classes. Um, here, I don't want to use the annotation config class. What I want to do, and I'll comment out component scan as well. What I want to do is I want to create that Spring IOC container, application context, Spring. Now I call it Spring here to emphasize the idea that the application context is the Spring container. Uh, in your typical day-to-day -day work, you'll call that context. You call it Spring, you'll probably get dragged into a Spring uh, into a, a, a code review. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to use the class path XML application context and say let's use that beans.xml file, which is the name of the file that we created that's got all the configuration in it right there. <sighs> click Control S. Looks like I got to organize my imports. So right click source, organize those imports. That red X goes away, sorry, white X on a red background. And it looks like everything is good here. By the way, just the way this code works, I tell the spring container what beans it should manage for me, and specifically the game and the score class. Then I pull an instance of the, the game out of the spring container, get bean game dot class, and then I call the play the game method. And the play the game method isn't that crazy, it just increases the score by one and then prints out the score. So it should print out the, the number one and it gets initialized to zero. I add one to it, print it out. It's, uh, uh, maybe we'll add some logic to run a little rock, paper, scissors game in the future, tic-tac-toe. I got a tutorial on how to create a, a Java tic-tac-toe game on YouTube. Check it out. Um, but for now, this is just kind of proof of concept stuff. I'm trying to keep things very, very simple so it's easy to see what's going on here. And so, of course, we call the game.playthegame. Now, by the way, if you're using Spring Boot, uh, you don't have to go directly to that container because everything can be dependency injected in Spring. But since I'm using the framework directly, you kind of see the requirement there. Okay, so I click Save. Take a look at my beans.xml file one more time. I'm going to right-click on this close code with a vengeance, select run Java application and boom, the number one prints out showing me that indeed we got the score and the game from the IOC container. Initially the score had zero wins. I added one, printed it out and the number one got printed out. So there you go. That's how you do a spring XML configuration for your Spring apps. Now, by the way, um, you can use that same beans.xml file in Spring Boot, but uh, the, the way that you configure it and point to that is just a little bit different. So check out my other tutorial on that if specifically you're after Spring Boot. But there you go, um, that's it. That's how you configure an XML configuration file for your Spring application. Now, if you enjoyed that tutorial, why don't you head over to the serverside.com. We've got a lot of great tutorials on Spring, Spring Boot, Boot, Java, Jakarta EE, uh, Hibernate. I actually wrote the book Hibernate Made Easy, a copy that's behind me there, along with What is Webster. Not selling too many of those <laughs> these days. And uh, also a book called uh, Pickering of Springfield, all about the origin of the cities that The Simpsons is based on. So if you're interested in those, head over to Amazon and check those out. And also, you know, it's Darcy DeClute at Scrumptious on Twitter. Um, her Scrum Master Certification Guide's back there. I uh, helped do some of the final edits on it, so I'm pretty proud of it. Um, so if you're interested in padding your resume, uh, you're 
into Agile and Scrum, uh, pick up a copy of that. Uh, a lot of people are reading the book and scoring 100% on the exam. Um, and then finally, if you're interested in my personal antics, you can follow me on Twitter. Message me over there at Cameron MCNZ, and you're probably watching this on YouTube, right? So why don't you subscribe on YouTube? <laughs>